today I, I will uh, present to you exercise number 311 for exam FM for financial mathematics mm, and uh, it will be posted only in the YouTube channel but of course it will be available as well in the online seminar that I teach. You can find information about uh, my how to find my website uh, the places where you can buy the exam FM manual uh, in paper and electronic version uh, on what in what you see here uh, also uh, the website for the uh, exam FM seminar online seminar is smarturl.it forward slash online actuary and if you find these exercises valuable and if you want to show your gratitude please consider helping our students at Illinois State University we use the money from donations for for scholarships for our students uh, the website is smarturl.it forward slash ISU actuary donate. Here is the exercise. You are given the following balance sheet information about an insurance company. Uh, the assets and liabilities are equal in their amounts. They're both one million. The currency is irrelevant, so we ignore that. The duration of assets is 5.5, where the duration of liabilities is 4.3. The convexity of assets and liabilities is exactly the same, it's 100. Ignoring, ignoring all other influences from the economic environment and based only on the factors given above, which of the following is true? The company benefits from a small change in interest rates. The company is harmed by a small change in interest rates. The company benefits if interest rates rise by a small amount, but is harmed if interest rates drop by a small amount. The company benefits if interest rates drop by a small amount, but is harmed if interest rates rise by a small amount. The company is not affected by changes in interest rates. So we have those five answers, and we're trying to understand which of them to pick. Let us start by noting that the initial surplus of this company is zero. That makes any kind of regular calculation that we could do inconvenient, um, because it's not possible to write duration of the surplus as a weighted average of durations of assets and liabilities because when you try to calculate the weights you would be dividing by zero and you can't do that. But what we can do is we can compare the impact of the change in interest rates let's just write interest rate let's just write that change as delta i and i is the interest rate and delta i is the change in it on uh, the comparing the impact on assets and liabilities using the standard approximation applicable to small changes in interest rate where the price of anything p as a function of interest rate so the price after the change in interest rate when the interest rate goes from i to the i plus delta i so p of i plus delta i minus the price before which is p of i divided by the price before p of i is approximately equal to minus the duration d times delta i plus one half times convexity c times delta i squared and we just write this out for both assets and liabilities writing a for assets l for liabilities and plugging in the duration for assets of 5.5 convexity of assets of 100 duration of liabilities of 4.3 and duration of liabilities, I mean, convexity of uh, liabilities of 100. Now we do know that assets and liabilities are equal, and they're both equal to a million, so we can actually write the formula for the surplus after the change in interest rate from i to i plus delta i as, well, the new surplus is the assets minus liabilities after the change in interest rate. But because A of I and L of I at the beginning are equal, if we subtract them both from these two quantities, we get the same thing. And we have the formula for those two differences. Uh, the first is minus 5.5 delta I times A of I plus 1 half times 100 times delta I squared times A of I. And then we subtract the second one, which is minus 4.3 delta I times L of I plus 1 half times 100 times delta i squared times l of i but l of i is the same as a of i so if you look at this the the 
the second part of each formula is the same and we subtract them so this cancels out and the only thing left is the duration part where we have minus 5.5 .5 delta I times A of I plus 4.3 delta I times L of I but both A of I and L of I are a million so this ends up being minus 5.5 .5 delta I plus 4.3 delta I times a million minus 5.5 .5 plus 4.3 is negative 1.2 Negative 1.2 times a million is negative 1,200,000. So this quantity is equal to negative 1,200,000 times delta I. This means that when interest rate uh, rates rise, so when delta I is positive, the resulting new surplus is negative, and the initial surplus was zero, so the company is harmed. While if interest rates fall, so when delta I is negative, the resulting new surplus is positive and the company benefits. And that's answer D. And I hope you enjoyed this exercise.